Many of you have probably come from my TF2 video, and while I'm not a TF2 YouTuber, I'd like to go over the history of Team Fortress to celebrate the game we all love. So let's get started. The year is 1996. Quake is the most popular FPS game, even more so than Doom. Its true 3D looked stunning at the time, compared to Doom's fake 3D. Quake had a lot of modding tools made for it, basically meaning you can make your own maps and even game modes. Robin Walker, John Cook, and Ian Corley, I don't know how to pronounce that, would use these tools to create the Quake mod called Team Fortress. Back then, no one had ever heard of class-based gameplay. It was an entirely new concept, whereas nowadays we see it in games such as Overwatch, Valorant, and Apex Legends. In the first version of this Quake mod, there were five classes, and after some time, all the classes were added. On December 22nd, they decided to move it to the Quake World Engine, a version of Quake better optimized for multiplayer. In 1997, the team decided to create a sequel to the game. This is when they were approached by Valve, who would hire the developers, who would develop Team Fortress Classic, which ran on Valve's own Gold Source engine. It was released for free if you had Half-Life, and then in 2003, it was released as its own game, where the game saw even more success. Now, if you don't know much about the early development of Team Fortress, you might be thinking, okay, so it goes directly to the cartoony TF2, right? Not even close. In 1998, TF2 Brotherhood of Arms was announced. The game is radically different from the TF2 we're all accustomed to. Instead of having ultra cartoony graphics, we get this. Stuff like rocket jumping would be removed to go for a more realistic approach to combat. Interestingly enough, there was a commander system for the game, so it seemed Valve wanted TF2 to be an extremely competitive game with complex mechanics such as this, and instead of respawning instantly, you'd have lives, meaning if you died three times, you were out. However, the game was scrapped, even though it looked quite far in development. Then in 2001, TF2's Invasions development was started, Instead of being realistic, they went for a more futuristic approach to the game, where humans and aliens would fight in sci-fi battles. There's not that much known about the game, the only information we have is from a source leak. However, a group of people called Team Gaben made a recreation of the game, which is what you're seeing now. However, again, this was scrapped. It's unlikely we will know the reason why, but we can only speculate. However, the TF2 we knew would be shown off at the EA Summer Games Showcase event in 2006. With a drastically different art style, unlike its predecessor, TF2 TF2 decided to go for a cartoony visual aesthetic, and the whole series took everything a little bit less seriously. With Abraham Lincoln with a jetpack to two brothers fighting over gravel, the game's story was not only straight out of the comic book, it was timeless and hilarious. The style was influenced by drawings such as J.C. Leyendecker, Dean Cornell, and Norman Rockwell. It was technical marvel at the time, with Valve showing what can be done on their Source engine, and it released as part of the Orange Box. The Orange Box is probably one of the coolest things Valve have ever done, except for making Half-Life Alex. Three fantastic fantastic games packed into one bundle, two of which revolutionised gaming, and the last was an entry in possibly the most beloved PC franchise. It was magical. On October 2007, TF2 was released to the PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. Just like CSGO, however, their Xbox 360 and PS3 versions would not be updated that much. The version shown was vastly different to the TF2 we have today, however. If you want to know about all the cool differences, there's a video here by Shunik. After the release of TF2, Valve updated it constantly, and as more people decided to pick it up more and more, more, the game just got better and better. On June 7th, Valve added hats, which was a first for any Valve game at the time, selling cosmetics in the form of microtransactions to players. The game's updates added weapons, maps, and much, much more to the game. And on June 3rd, 2011, Valve made the game free to play. To finance this, they made it so you either had to get non-default unique weapons through item drops, or you could buy them using microtransactions in the Manco store. And now, I'm not going to go through all of the updates for TF2 because that would take literally ages, so let's fast forward to 2017, when the Jungle Inferno update released. Jungle Inferno added the Jungle Inferno contract and a host of balance improvements to the Pyro. The game saw no major update, even up to today, over 1,000 days later. And in 2020, well, the game isn't looking so hot. But if you want to learn about that, I'd recommend watching my State of Tier 2 video. But today, the game is going strong, with 60,000 players playing on Steam. Despite the bot situation, the community has remained stronger than ever, hoping that Valve would release an update, and I seriously hope they do. Thanks for watching this video. This is part of a video series called the Valve Trilogy, so if you want to get notified as soon as that's released, click that sub button. I also have a Discord server where you can get information on upcoming videos, and I also have a second channel where I upload more experimental content. Other than that, I've been Steinfall, you've been new, thanks for watching, and goodbye.